Welcome to Your Gal Friday, a podcast about female leaders, innovators, and rule breakers. Each week, your hosts, Leah and Phoebe, will shine a spotlight on an amazing gal and talk about what we can all learn from her. Brought to you by Gal's Guide to the Galaxy. Welcome to Your Gal Friday. I'm Dr. Leah Leach. And I'm Phoebe Freer. Today we are wrapping up our journey into the real life gals of hidden figures in our epilogue show. We're going to reflect on the big picture of these genius gals and let you know what we have learned along the way. So we have a series of questions that we have put together Mm -hmm. that Phoebe and I will gloriously take turns on. I thought a good place to start would be Phoebe, how did you like learning about the NACA and NASA, spending some time with some space race people? (laughs) Totally. So I actually did not really know about the NACA before watching Hidden Figures. I did not realize that NASA was like started out as a different program. So I thought it was fascinating and it was really fun for me to learn more about it because... um, Science, it, as you might know, is not my strong suit, right? It's not. It's not stuff. That's it's not like, your comfort zone. You're exactly. not bad at it. It's, it's not just my, not your comfort area. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's not my comfort zone. So, but I love movies like Apollo thirteen and Hidden Figures, of course. But like it, it makes me feel very empowered and very, um, like better about myself that I can understand the NSAA and NASA. And like dig deeper and and learn how these women impacted these organizations. So I thought it was great and empowering for me personally. And then I just love sharing with other people as well. Yeah. And you went and watched Apollo 13 after we finished the episode too, didn't you? I did. Yes, you did. I loved it. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, I was watching Apollo 13 with my roommate. So Katherine Johnson was actually in NASA for so long. She should have had a part in not just Hidden Figures, but in two other space-related movies, Um, The Right Stuff and Apollo 13. Now, The Right Stuff, I've not seen before, but it's about the Mercury 7 um, space launch. Right. And it's been a long time since I saw it, but yes. (laughs) Right. But I was really excited because... Apollo 13 is at least in my top 20 list of favorite movies of all time. It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So as we were learning about Apollo, about Catherine, I was going through and I I really wanted to watch Apollo 13 again because I was watching it with my roommate and I'm like, okay, this is the moment. This is the moment where Catherine could have been like, it was (laughs) just, it was a lot of fun, (laughs) but it's just really cool. Absolutely. I actually was able to watch the movie and then point out the exact spot and point out exactly what impact she had and yeah. why, you know, like I understand why she's not in the movie because it would have been a, a very yes. small blip, you know, but it was really cool to be able to fill in the details for myself. Right. Exactly. Yes. Oh, I absolutely adore it. <laughs> but Leah, you actually have a lot more research and Like, you're super into space, obviously, with Gal's Guide to the Galaxy and all that stuff. So what do you like learning about the NACA and NASA? Like, your perspective is totally different. Yeah, I was a super fangirl, number one, coming into it. But at the same time, I did dedicate some time to watching um, a documentary on Langley specifically. And then also I watched a few on NASA because I really just kind of wanted to like rekindle my knowledge because a lot of it spans back to, you know, when I was a kid and my dad taking me to like aviation museums and going to space centers and stuff like that. So sometimes, you know, memory can be foggy when you're a little fangirl kid. Uh, So I wanted to make sure I was up to date on my NASA knowledge. So I was... I was in my comfort zone the entire time (laughs) of learning about NASA. (laughs) But what I didn't know was uh, I didn't know how much they actually had an impact on environmental studies and how much Mm -hmm. they really worked for aviation and safety. Like beyond the space shuttle, we're talking about, you know what I mean? Like Boeing's and our airplanes that are traveling, you know what I mean? Uh, Taking us around the country and around the world. So I thought that was fascinating. 
Um, I just, I love people at NASA. I love like Apollo 13. We got work the problem people. Mm -hmm. I say that far too much, uh, because to me, that's the essence of what I love about NASA. And it's a great model to live by because life is never the same. You have to just constantly work the problem or you freeze and you don't do anything, you know? Right. Exactly. Yeah, it's not a moment to freeze. It's a time to work the problem, which I love. Totally. Um, the other thing <laughs> that I just love being in the headspace of uh, NASA and the NACA is they ask what if questions and they ask mm-hmm. things that are outside the box, like so much outside the box of things. No one's ever done it before, you know, like mm-hmm. hidden figures. I mean, there's never been, uh, you know, a man put in a rocket ship to shoot to the moon before. So, of course, right. there's no protocol for this. <laughs> Right. So I love that. Um, and I loved that the way that they got there and they problem solved was math and science. Like, Definitely. just like, mm-hmm, that's how you do. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's that, that's what makes the most sense. <laughs> and they just proved it. Right. I will say it's also interesting because so I was, you know, I was currently really dedicated to be in this NACA and NASA headspace. And while that was happening, uh, Falcon Heavy launched. And so Mm -hmm. now if our listeners might have missed it and be like, what in the world is Falcon Heavy? It's by SpaceX and SpaceX is a private company. Uh, Their goal is to enable people to live on other planets. That's what they're trying to do. So Falcon Heavy was an unmanned test flight. It had 27 rockets and they wanted to see if number one, it would take off. Number two, if the boosters could be returned back to Earth. And number three, could it make it to Mars? And the priority was really that one, two and three. Like the third is not a huge priority. Let me put it that way Mm -hmm. but they want to know so you know i am a nasa fangirl i i really hate the crumbling funding that our space program Mm -hmm. has had with nasa so i am delighted and thrilled with the work that spacex is doing so watching like falcon heavy and being in this like nasa mindset it made me want to join space camp again i'm just saying it was fun (laughs) totally oh yeah that makes complete sense Absolutely. You should just start a space camp. <laughs> oh, I wait, really, we have way yes. too many projects we're starting. We but... have way too many projects. Later down the line, space camp, I'll put it on the list. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. But I love that. Exactly. So, Phoebe, whose story uh, was the hardest to research for you? I've been thinking about this for a little bit, and I really think it, like, Dorothy was probably the hardest just because she was our first one. And that we research and a lot of our research for these three gals came from the book, um, Hidden Figures by Margot Lee Shutterly. And um, it took me a bit to get back into the rhythm and to like understand where these facts were coming from. And Catherine was actually like when once I understood what I was looking for for Dorothy, it was perfectly fine. But with Catherine, her backstory was a lot more scattered and a lot more like. Okay, yeah. what where is it? Where do I pit, like fit the puzzle pieces because because Catherine was a composite character in the movie, I wanted to make sure that her facts were separated. So, right. I mean, Dorothy was hard, but I think maybe Catherine was probably the hardest for me because one her her backstory, of course, like the composite like I just said, but also I I was getting like confused with the different characters. I was like, okay, so this happened to Dorothy, but this happened to Catherine and wait, who, per- who am right. I on? And what was I, what am I doing? And wait, this was a composite right. character. So this happened to Mary. So, so it was like, while I was researching Catherine, I was figuring out what was happening to Mary and I was relearning what happened right. to Dorothy. So Catherine was probably the hardest for me just because of all that. That makes sense. No, I can totally see that. Yeah. Um, What about you? There was three. Yeah, there was three aspects for me um, that were really that took some major digging and I didn't expect them um, to actually take some digging. And honestly, sometimes I didn't find what I was looking for. Um, The Mary Jackson quote was a very interesting one. Um, Now, we ended up finding a quote, and it's from a 1977 Ebony magazine that interviewed her. And thank goodness we found that. But why isn't there more quotes from Mary Jackson? (laughs) Yeah, she lived longer. She she was spunky. 
Yeah, right. like it just doesn't make sense. She was the yeah. outspoken one. She was the one who said lots right. of things. <laughs> exactly. But and there's no She quotes. was on, you know, the Equal Rights Opportunity Commissions. And, you know, she was a public figure. She was the front desk gal at the, you know, the USO. She was... She was yeah. an outwardly speaking gal. So I'm, I was I was disappointed is probably the best word that I can, you know, yeah. use. The, there aren't more Mary quotes out there because I found her extremely inspiring and I wanted to hear more words from her. Like we learned a lot about her life, but it's really totally. interesting um, when you hear a quote from somebody, you get it in their words and you get their perspective on life. And that's why we finish episodes with a quote. Because it's, oh, yeah, it, it's totally. them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's straight from them. Yeah. The second one was Dorothy Vaughn's Math Math song. Oh, my gosh. I wanted yeah, to find the Math was, Math song oh, so I badly. Yeah, I know. My Google Kung Fu was not working. That was disappointing. Well, <laughs> I wonder if it, I don't know. I really, I really want to just bid a do a big shout out to the world hey if you know where this song is send it Please. to us because that was probably yes. the biggest disappointing thing it was like but she wrote a song and it's so cool i'm sure I of know. it like, <laughs> exactly i'm gonna go with somewhere. one day one day yeah exactly oh, yeah. <laughs> we one we totally more. did our due diligence so <laughs> put that out into the the universe to you know to bring it all back and but the last thing that was the hardest for me um it was also figuring out what Dorothy did on the scout program. Cause like every biography yeah. mentioned, she also worked on the scout program. So, you but know, I mean, I learned what mentioned. the scout program, <laughs> right. And I learned what the scout program was. So it's like, well, at least I got that, but it was just frustrating that I couldn't find her connection and her direct involvement because also it was more recent history than all the other history that we were talking about. So I was right. like, I want to know more. So that I, those were the, they were momentary things, but those were the three things that were the hardest for me. I was like, this shouldn't that be this sense. hard. <laughs> yeah. So who totally surprised you? I think Dorothy surprised me because, I mean, I'm going to be honest. When I watched the movie, I thought Dorothy was cool, but she, I didn't really yeah. have a connection with her. Like, she's cool, right. but I was like, okay, I definitely like Catherine and Mary more. Like, I had my mind made up. I was a little, like... Oh, we're doing Dorothy first. Okay. You know, I was like, that's not my favorite, but it's Leah's favorite. So let's go with it. But like, <laughs> right. She's awesome. Like she has this <laughs> whole group mentality. Like she really grew. I was just like, oh, I get it. This is why it's Leah's favorite. Like Dorothy's Leah's favorite. Yep. Because you saw it. This makes complete <laughs> sense now. I was just like, oh my gosh, she <laughs> she's amazing. So she completely surprised me because... I don't know why I just didn't really think I would find that connection with her, but I totally right. did. So that was really, that was actually a, a lot of fun. Absolutely. You know what? I'm kind of the same way. Cause you know, I mean, we started in the prologue. I was like, Dorothy's my favorite, you know, mm -hmm. but the weird thing is I think Mary's my favorite now. It's so Aww. weird. She, Mary, like she really surprised me. I got more feels researching mm. Mary's story. Um, I will oh, yeah. admit she is the story that got me crying when I was researching. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I, I didn't expect it, but I probably should have because I'm the daughter of an engineer and I now run a noun profit to empower women. And that was just and, way yeah. too big of a connection that I was having with Mary where it's like, this is an amazing thing to process. Holy cow. Um, I mean, I just, I felt a kinship with Mary and I felt like we had a lot more in common, but I will say I am not as smart as Mary Jackson. So, but I get her, I get her. <laughs> <laughs> You're smart so, in different ways. Don't sell yourself. Yeah. Short. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't engineer anything out of a paper bag and I can't tell you about drag and viscosity of air. None of it. <laughs> <laughs> but she can, and that's fabulous. She was where she needed to be. <laughs> that is but, yeah, awesome. Oh, Mary surprised me. I loved her. Um, so uh, I guess this kind of ties into, too, because we already did. So whose story connected with you most? Was it Dorothy then? Or was that more of a surprise? It's, that was more of my... Dorothy was more of a surprise for me. Um, the connection thing is really hard for me to answer. Because I found a different kind of connection with each gal. 
because right, with yeah. Dorothy, Dorothy actually really reminded of reminded me of you because of her Aww. like if you're gonna like yeah because she has this whole community aspect like if you're gonna take yeah. me you gotta take my gals with me like I, i'm taking my mm-hmm. gals with me you know and like i feel like every time you're moving on to something you're like hey phoebe do you want to work on this like you don't have to but exactly. hey it's open there for you it, like I, and, but i'm bringing I'm my gals one. with me Exactly. I'm not the only yeah. gal you do. Like, there's so many other gals that you completely involve. So, like, she really reminded mm-hmm. me of you, and I, I thought that was really awesome. Uh-huh. And, it, and, yeah. And I was like, oh, I want to be that way. just made my I whole day. Aw. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I want to I wanna be like that, too, you know? But I'm just like, I feel so scattered with my life right now. I'm like, oh, I, d- I don't think I'm doing that, but I want to. So there's that connection right. with Dorothy yeah. that I have. That's like, so there's that with Dorothy. And then with It's Catherine, like a role model. It's like a path sort totally. of thing. Like, you know what? I can get yeah. there maybe one day. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But with Catherine, you were saying, of how you connected with Catherine. Yeah. Was it the Presidential Medal of Freedom? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, probably. <laughs> Catherine was yeah, always it's so very, adorable. Um, it's so adorable. She is very focused. She knows exactly. Um, she knew exactly what she was good at. That's That was it. My connection with Catherine was she knew from a very young age what she was good at, and she had people encourage her yeah. from a very young age. And Catherine, I completely relate to. Like, she's the one that I, I really related to because it's like, okay, I know what my gifting is, and I'm able to succeed mm-hmm. because of the people around me, you know. And, yeah, she got the Presidential Medal of Freedom Award from President Barack Obama, which is awesome. And it's just like... She she's kind of like the epitome of of if you translate that to filmmaking, like she's kind of what I want to get at. Like, I, I don't necessarily want to be like, oh, we're going to Hollywood and going to the Oscars like that would be cool. But like there's certain levels in my life I'm like, I, I want to achieve and I want to achieve it like actually mm-hmm. all of three of these gals did achieve it. And Catherine, I really um. I really related to her a lot. And then and then Mary, I, I freaking love Mary. Like, she's just, like, right. on point and outspoken. She's another one of those that I aspire to be like because I'm, I'm typically soft-spoken, mm-hmm. which is actually why this podcast is... Uh, it started out a little out of my comfort zone because I'm usually the quiet one back in the corner who doesn't say anything unless mm-hmm. I have to. So... <laughs> Um, but Mary is like, she's right out there. She's the one with the bathroom story. She like take a, took a stand for herself and just, uh, like, she's a, a huge inspiration to me. She's like, I want to be Mary. Like, I want to be yeah. all of these gals mixed. Of course. That's what I've been saying. But Mary I know, is right? like, no, all at the I want to take time. charge. <laughs> all, all of them, yeah. all at the same time. There's like, <laughs> you know, but Mary has this take charge attitude that I'm like, I've been trying to adapt that for over a year now and i'm like yeah okay mary Mm -hmm. let's go like channel my inner mary (laughs) yeah i mean i would uh, i would say it's it's pretty much um the same for me the connecting was um mary got me uh i didn't expect it um but i yeah, yeah it's the same thing i found elements of each of the gals that it's like that's something to strive to be. That's something to relate to. Oh, yeah. That's a a role model to um to look up to. And it's fantastic. And it's something where it's like, yes, we need more of these stories. We need more appreciation um of all three of these gals, because there's a lot to connect to, um, which I oh, absolutely yeah. love. So what what differences did you see in these gals? I think an interesting difference is if we compare Dorothy Vaughn to Mary Jackson because Dorothy right. Vaughn was very much um all about the t- togetherness and like I'm taking my gals with me but she was softer spoken like she spoke yeah. up when when it was absolutely necessary not necessarily every chance she got she picked she was very specific in her moments to speak up whereas Mary right was just very bold in every chance. Like, she made up excuses to just go for it, 
which both approaches mm-hmm. are perfectly fine and perfectly yeah I- it gets changed done yeah and it but it's fascinating to watch them to to compare them because they're totally different ways of approaching essentially the same problem i kind of feel like maybe it's because of the movie that they it um singles out catherine or maybe it's just because of the way she tackles life but catherine seems more Mm -hmm. meticulous when it comes to the math and very like precise with her movements her like actions um the math like everything so i feel like from different aspects and ranges Catherine's like the precision one who's like okay I want to advance you know and then mm-hmm. Dorothy is the like softer spoken one she's like I want us to advance and then Mary's like right. okay we're going to all fight for what we need so I I exactly. think Exactly. Yeah. It's really fun watching them all tackle it's the same variations problem on a theme. Different... Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mhm. So what about you? What differences? The differences that I saw, like, um, each gal was a pioneer in a different field. So, like, Mary, we had engineering. Uh, mm-hmm. Dorothy, we had Fortran. And then Catherine, right. we had analytic geometry. So we had right. that difference in their different fields. We also had um, Dorothy and Mary, they reached the top of their field. Like, and then their program yeah. shut down or they basically had to take a demotion and move to another area to be able to, you know, to stay employed. Um, right. Where Catherine did not have that problem. Um, that's one difference um, uh, of, you know, excelling, going up the ladder or continual work is the other thing too if they close down you know your program that's there's not a whole bunch you can do it's not your fault um the other thing is i was wondering maybe that's why more people know about Catherine if they know about any of the hidden figures by name maybe because she had the longevity you know what i mean she had she stayed in the same program for a very long time but it also could be because she is a national treasure and she is still alive and still with us so that could be also why more people know about Catherine. And that is totally awesome, too. Just totally learn about these other girls, too. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. So that was the differences that I saw. But, yeah, they are variations on a theme. It is very um, subtle differences, but it's those little subtle things that you can learn from. And you can be like, that's another way to tackle the same problem. So, you know, in this moment, am I Mary, Dorothy, or Catherine? (laughs) It's yeah, quite fun. exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's very fun. It's and it's almost a daily question you can ask yourself. Okay. At yeah. least for me. It's like, okay, am I channeling Dorothy, Catherine, or Mary today? <laughs> right. Exactly. I love it. I think it's brilliant. So what similarities <laughs> did you see in the three gals? I think the obvious similarities would be um they were all fighting for the same rights. Um mm-hmm. and they were all working, of course, for the NACA and NASA. Other similarities were, I'm pretty sure all three of them were in the Alpha Kappa Alpha, I think that's the I right think one. so. Sorority. They yeah. all were in the Alpha Kappa right. Alpha sorority. They all were devout to their churches. They all yes, very had true. families. They all had husbands, um, mm-hmm. multiple kids. Um, they all had supportive husbands that were not trying yes. to compete with their careers so i think those Mm -hmm. are and and um another huge similarity which i found out um was they all had very supportive families growing up oh very true yeah it makes a big difference it makes a huge Mm -hmm. difference and that really impacted me because i have a i have a really supportive family while Mm -hmm. like now and while i was growing up and it makes a huge difference and i say all the time I would be in a completely different place right now if my family decided that filmmaking was dumb and like a like not a good decision because I care so much about what they think and their support has pushed me so far that it's like without that I'd still want to be a filmmaker but I would not be this far at the age of 23 you know so I always say it's parental a, support or or a mentor support early on yeah, allows you totally. to go farther faster. Definitely. That's it gives you a head start. Yeah, totally. Definitely. It just it makes me think a lot because like you said a mentor 
could do the same thing. So it's like, okay, it could, but I you're still help. fighting against the everyday home life, though. So exactly. it can, but it's got to be really strong. That family life matters. Yeah, it does. So it just it just makes you think and it makes it, it. It was really inspiring to see that about all three of them. And it also makes me curious. It's the sole reason why I always love doing the um the growing up life section of all these gals yeah. like it it fascinates me because of where they end up it, it's the perfect example all three of these gals were successful and all three of these gals had positive family lives like this is exactly why mm-hmm. i'm always curious where people come from because yeah. either they succeeded because they fought against the way they grew up or because mm-hmm. they were encouraged so it's just right. It's really cool. Yeah. Oh, that's a very good point. Yeah. <laughs> um, to add to that, the similarities that I saw on because all of mm-hmm. those as well. Yes. Uh, yeah. they're all brilliant. They're brilliant in different oh, fields. Yeah. They all came to mathematics first, but brilliant minds. My goodness. Uh, they all were you know helping other women. Very much mm-hmm. camaraderie in that. Um, amazing patriotism. Uh, that's something uh, that really comes across in the book, actually. Uh, they call it the double V, the the double victory day. Um, mm-hmm. So it meant victory for World War II, but it also meant victory for African Americans in the workplace. So it was a double totally. victory. And they were working towards that. And it was extremely important to building a community, changing perceptions, but doing the work, you know, uh, oh, for yeah. the country and, and for themselves mm-hmm. and to make their family proud and it's like yes that's a lot of pressure but yes <laughs> mm. um and then longevity because they dorothy lived to be 98 uh mary totally. lived to be 83 and then Catherine's still with us amazing i almost it yeah. makes me kind of wonder um doing the thing that you love doing the thing that you're gifted at and having an opportunity to really plug into that Maybe that's a key to life expectancy. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. Like they had a really long life, which is great. Doing what you love, maybe it keeps you healthy. I don't know. <laughs> I I mean, I think it's a a solid a solid assumption, solid deduction. Oh yes, there we go. Yes, absolutely. The other thing I would say is for a similarity is they all faced uh, racism and or sexism, like sometimes at the same time, with yep. dignity. And grace. And I don't know if I could have done that, but they uh, yeah. were very dignified. They chose their battles, but at the same time, they were not doormats about it. Um, and what they had to endure to get that double victory, uh, kudos, because that's that's amazing. Uh, it, you know, so I don't know if I would have had the due diligence, you know what I mean, to stay with it um, and Absolutely. to do that. Same so, here. yep. To not only succeed in their careers, but fight back positively because right. you we learn so much positive things about these women so obviously they weren't like angry every single day i mean they probably had their moments but like oh everybody the end does of the yeah d- oh yeah but at the end of the day their life stories are positivity and change and growth yep absolutely they're they're extremely positive yeah. Um, you know what I mean? That's the thing. It's always a, a, a positivity looking up, yeah. uh, you know, working really for hard a brighter do. day. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I dug it. Um, so lastly, what is the, what is the overarching lesson? Like, you know, as looking back over, mm-hmm. um, not only these three gals, but kind of like what we learned about like NASA and NACA, uh, for you, what's the, what's the big lesson that you kind of learned overall? I think at the end of the day, the big lesson for me is, like we were saying about the positivity, like I'm typically a positive mm-hmm. person and I'm typically like, okay, we're going to look at the glass half half full type stuff, but I've been feeling kind of worn down and stuff and I'm like, oh, you know, or like being influenced by complaining more or whatever. And I'm like, but look at these gals, like just, right. just look at them. Like, I, mm-hmm. that's what I want to be. All three of them, like, pieces of all three of them, the overarching lesson to me is, okay, yeah, we're still fighting similar battles, but mm-hmm. they started the fight for us. You know, they started the fight yeah. 
a long time ago and had it way worse. And I, I think it's almost our duty to continue the fight for them because right. they started it for us. You know, they started and it for them, them. And to give them proper credit. Yeah. Exactly. So mm-hmm. I, I think at the end of the day, the the lesson to me is, okay, here are the different p- pieces of these people that I want to be, that I want to embody, that mm-hmm. I've wanted to embody for ever since I wanted to become a filmmaker, ever since I wanted to grow up. Like, this is the stuff I've wanted to aspire to. And mm-hmm. I don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose sight of that. So that's, right. that's kind of like you can translate like i love nasa i love i love their connection with nasa with science and math but it was definitely more of a personal connection to me of hey mm-hmm. you keep your head up and be a positive light and continue to be a positive light because people need that and people need you yeah so Exactly. And it matters. It really it matters. does. Yeah. It really, really matters. Yep. For me, for the overarching, I mean, I love that NASA was built on this idea of gathering the most brilliant minds of our time, regardless of gender and regardless totally. of color. Now, many of these brilliant minds, they were immigrants and they were women. <laughs> now, yep. war. Like I said in, I think, the first episode um, that we did with Dorothy Vaughn, war was a big factor in the NACA and NASA. They got their most amount of funding when we were in wartime Mm -hmm. (laughs) because everybody was terrified. Um, Now, when I think of, like, wartime and I think of women, I think of the image of Rosie the Riveter. And I think how it represents women that went to work during World War II. Now, I see the gals of hidden figures, the ones we talked about in the episodes and like the many more we didn't talk about. Uh, There's lots more of them. I see them as an extension of that kind of Rosie the Riveter icon. Now, the hidden figures, women, they were doing their part during wartime and their patriotism was on point. But the cool thing is is these gals got to stay employed after the war ended and they were black. Those are two things that are really, really important and super uh, more awesome, I would actually say, than the Rosie the Riveter icon. Um, But visual imagery is crucial. You know, you and I know, I have a past in filmmaking, you're in filmmaking. We rely on that visual uh, image to kind of, you know what I mean, to to tell us a story. So, you know, when people see the Rosie the Riveter icon, Mm -hmm. hopefully people know what that stands for. But if you are a person of color, you might not see yourself in that image doesn't represent you it doesn't you know what i mean it doesn't connect to you and that is a hole that needs to be filled because representation matters it totally does absolutely um so the credit goes to margot lee shetterly for the book and then for them making the movie because that put these gals in a spotlight so we could get a visual imagery of what these brilliant minds look like so we could see it we had to see it to be it. You know what I'm saying? Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. So these three gals, they did their part for their country. They moved those color lines back a little bit further. Um, to me, they are an extension of the Rosie the Riveter icon, but I actually think it's an evolution to something even greater absolutely. because I think these are three gals that everybody should know about. Everybody should find inspiration in them. Uh, because they are the complete package. And I rarely oh, yeah. say that about a person, but I'm saying that about three people. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the big overarching uh, uh, thing for me. <laughs> Absolutely. I love that. Well, that wraps it up for us. Let us know on social media what you have learned from the Hidden Figures Gals. We really want to know. So we're on Facebook at Your Gal Friday Podcast, and we are on Twitter at Gals Guide Galaxy. So next week, we are really excited. Mm -hmm. We are going to start the real-life gals of Hamilton, y'all. So we are going to start with a prologue. We're going to give you our baseline knowledge, which, spoilers, by the way, it's mostly the play. Yeah. (laughs) But we will also talk about who we are excited to learn from and the three, oh wait, maybe more gals that we actually picked. So 
thank you as always for subscribing. Till next time. For more information about this week's gal or to check out our previous episodes, visit galsguide.org. To support the show, visit the Gals Guide Patreon page. We love our patrons and offer exclusive perks and behind-the-scenes access for as little as $1 a month. Thank you so much for subscribing to Your Gal Friday.